Are we on? Right. Well, hello, all you bleeding edge tech Tuesday types. That's, you know, bleeding edge of technology. Not you. Not you bleeding tech. I'll start again. What did I say? During the meanwhilst. During the meanwhilst? No, no, no. Like that at all. Well, hello. Uh, it's us again. Uh, the dog, the bird, and me with another sort of review. I say, like, sort of, because I'm not really a product reviewer uh, per se, as anybody who's watched any of my, like, uh, review-type videos will attest to. Uh, but I'm more someone who will just let you know what my experience of using something is like. Uh, so a more personal kind of how I uh, feel about something over, you know, like a more uh, classic technical review. Anyway, the something I'm going to talk about today is my Apple M2 Pro Mac Mini, a computer I've been using daily now since last July. Now, appearance-wise, the Mini hasn't changed in, in years. Uh, this Pro version does, though, differ structurally from the standard M2 uh, Mini here and the M1 before that in offering uh, four Thunderbolt 4 ports instead of just the two. Now, this is the only reason, really, I upgraded from the uh, M1 Mac Mini I was using. I just needed more ports for my ever-expanding collection of, uh, of drives. Now, for the record, I've got the standard M2 Pro system on a chip with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte solid state drive. And the cost of all this extra performance and connectivity? Well, I paid the princely sum of £1,399 for it. Now, with its slim line and compact build, the Mini sits really unobtrusively under my monitor shelf, along with some of the other gubbins I've got plugged into it. Yeah, it's a really neat solution, I think, and can easily be hidden right out of the way if necessary. Uh, you could even mount it like behind a monitor for a really sleek look if you wanted. Now, I've paired my Mini with Apple's second-generation Magic Mouse trackpad and keyboard, uh, along with a beautiful ViewSonic 27-inch 4K display. Uh, for an overview of everything connected to the Mini and how it is connected, uh, pause the video now and take a look at this chart on screen. Now, you need, you need uh, a trackpad and a mouse if you're using Apple's Magic Mouse because when it's charging... You can't use it. The charge port is uh, is underneath. Now, whoever signed off that design once, you know, once sack in in my mind. So, um, uh, when the uh, the mouse is charging, I can uh, I can still use I can still use my trackpad. But I really probably should get uh, a better mouse. Perhaps one of those Logitech uh, MX Master ones. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I'm really happy with this setup, uh, mouse, mouse aside, though, with plenty of airspace around the computer and with hardly a cable in sight, uh, it's really a very neat uh, and tidy setup, as you can hopefully, as you can hopefully see. Uh, what, uh, Nick, is the computer like to use? Well, in short, I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, that if you are a photographer running powerful apps like Adobe's Lightroom and Photoshop, or something like Capture One, uh, who also dabbles in video editing, then this is all a computer you will ever need. There you go. You can switch off now if you want. But if you are, if you are still here and sticking around, I'll attempt to elaborate and qualify this rather sweeping statement. Well, to start uh, at the beginning, really, startup is rapid from steep and even from shutdown, and apps open really quickly. Anyone coming to an Apple-powered computer from an older Intel one uh, will immediately notice a huge difference, you know, in those basic speeds. From a photographer's perspective, Lightroom and Photoshop are incredibly quick and smooth in use, with no sign of any freezing, while the computer, you know, tries to catch up with uh, with tasks. It's just a really seamless experience. Even tasks such as, you know, compositing multi-shot panoramas are done, you know, like relatively quickly. Uh, here's an example of uh, one on screen right now. This is a nine-frame panorama, and if you put a stopwatch on it, you can see that it was all done in around 42 seconds, more than quick enough, I'm sure you'll agree. 
Now, as you know, I regularly also shoot multi-frame focus brackets and using Helicon Focus, the whole process from rendering, aligning and stacking this image consisting of 16 frames took just, just 21 seconds. And finally, as a test, I exported 121 raw XH2 files measuring uh, 85.6 megabytes each and converted them all to JPEG in just 2 minutes and 7 seconds. Now, maybe you're not rapid on the face of it and you can maybe go and make a quick cup of tea while waiting, but compared to my old Intel-powered iMac, I could literally have made and eaten a decent lunch while waiting for it to finish. And there may even have been time left over for Lisa to do the dishes. I'll leave. Uh, I'm not a huge Capture One user and only rarely use the free uh, Fujifilm Express version. But again, it's a painless and fast experience in my, uh, well, in my experience. Let's move on to video editing next. Now, I only use iMovie as it's perfectly adequate uh, for my means. I have dabbled with uh, Final Cut Pro. But it's just too much for me. Though. I just didn't need all that functionality. Now, the mini handled 4K footage, audio effects, etc. in its stride with no freezes or dropped frames. And I found that videos render in real time uh, or even uh, faster if it's a simple one. Admittedly, I'm not a video power user, you know, shooting raw black magic or red 8K footage. That probably would be too much for iMovie, let alone the computer. But if anyone has any experience of more complex video editing, then please let us all know in the comment section below. Simple tasks like, you know, uh, web browsing, email and using apps like, you know, Word, etc. They hardly, they hardly task the computer at all. I mean, they hard, they'd hardly task an Intel machine, really. Anyway, uh, to give the Mini a really good workout, I opened 20 tabs in Safari, had Word and Excel running in the background, opened Lightroom and then edited a video in iMovie. Uh, all this, and there was just no real noticeable drop-off in performance. Uh, and on top of that, I have never once heard the computer's fans kick in, and it's never gone above, well, even now, lukewarm to the touch, uh, pointing, I feel, to an incredibly power efficient machine gone to other bluetooth disconnection woes i sometimes but not really not that often experience with my m1 mini uh, I, but i've not experienced uh, one issue touch wood as yet i still can't connect my lovely vintage keyboard though that stopped working way back in mac os 12 it's a shame really that apple decided to render it obsolete as it's a it's a fantastic old keyboard otherwise wi-fi connection is solid and reliable but i've not uh, as yet used the ethernet port so can't comment on speeds uh, there now i titled this video as all a computer you will ever need and i stand by that statement and as long as you don't go uh, adding you know more internal storage or ram which will take the cost into mac studio territory then it also offers incredible value value for money and if you do need to add more storage then don't whatever you do pay apple's ridiculously inflated prices uh, instead take advantage of the thunderbolt ports and connect extra external storage now the 512 gigabyte internal drive in this machine is on another level speed wise anyway compared to the uh, offerings in the standard m2 machine something to do with the drives that apple uses apparently uh, i think anyway on screen now is a black magic speed test of the internal and external uh, connected solid state drives now while the external drives do run at a fraction of the speed of the internal unit they are still plenty quick enough uh, even even for video editing now i do most of my video editing uh, off an external drive and compared to editing natively from the internal drive i've not noticed any drop off in performance well not to my senses at least now, it might be worth your while getting an extra ram uh, boosting say to you know 32 gigabytes to completely future proof your computer uh, but the way the new m2 pro chip handles memory the native 16 gigabytes i think is more than enough it, it is for my needs anyway uh, as I said at the start of the video, this is the perfect bang for buck machine for photographers and videographers. Coupled with my M1 Pro uh, MacBook Pro with its, you know, slightly upgraded extra core chip and my M1 powered iPad Air, I really can't see me ever upgrading my computer setup, well, ever again, really. 
Uh, even if, and I mean this, even if Apple releases a new iMac with a larger display, I can't see me changing. I really think, you know, the current setup uh, does more than I will ever need. Uh, and it, it'll, certainly, it'll certainly see me out, put it that way. Right, that's it for this uh, short review of my M2 Pro Mac Mini computer. We will be back on uh, Saturday uh, where we're going to take a stroll, a long, slow stroll down Amnesia Lane. And I'm going to look at um, 10, 10 memories, five musical ones and five images from, from the past and uh, tell you about the memories that they evoke. So not necessarily a photography video, not necessarily a musical video, but uh, a bit of... A bit of both. All right, then. Uh, until then, uh, be nice, and we'll see you on Saturday. Ta-ra.